I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fang claws coming out through, three inches long, you know, just sharp as they could be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. Well, hopefully this episode's not cursed, too. Hopefully it's not cursed. My, um, so my parents are going away, and um, I'm going to be watching yeah. the cat. So what I did, just so I don't have to drive there early in the morning, I have an automatic yeah. cat, cat feeder here that that uh, you can program what time and, the, and how much food you want to come out. So I lent that to my mom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, it's also, it's battery powered. It's got a thing in the back where you can plug it in. So I gave it to her and I said something like... Um, also, you, you can plug it in. There's a thing in the back. I'm sure you guys have an adapter over there or whatever that'll that'll work. Oh, God. So she has it for a few days. I don't hear anything. I'm at work. I text oh, her. Oh, no. And I say, hey, how, how you figure out how to program the, the feeder. If not, I, I can help you. And I just hear, <laughs> I, get, I get two messages back from her. And it says, I'm sorry, I blew it up. What? So then I call because my interest has peaked. So, um, but, but like, wait, what? <laughs> so, so I should have been more clear. So this is also on me that, oh when, no, when you plug in an adapter for it, you have to read on the Remote. bottom of it, the voltage that it needs to operate. And then the minimum amperage that you, your adapter needs to supply and then find a wall adapter that has the same numbers, the same voltage and equal to or greater amps. Correct. She, she she just grabbed one and plugged that shit right into the wall. So then there there was apparently uh, an odd sound, and then it was just billowing smoke. <laughs> oh. So she, I suspect she greatly exceeded the voltage. Um, that the best that... thing is, she's like Brandon. Okay. Th- she goes, Brandon. This is this is three days ago. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> and I was like three days ago, and she goes, yeah. I wasn't going to tell you. I was going to buy the exact same one and just oh not tell you. Oh, my God. Like, it's a goldfish or a hamster. Oh, she was going to buy God. an identical feeder and does not tell me. But oh, no. During the pandemic, everyone bought pets. And, All, and this yeah. was the Woe Pet, which is, it, it, it sold out everywhere. Petco, Walmart, Amazon. You can't yeah, get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's the kind where you don't need a phone app to work it, which is why everybody likes it. So, okay, yeah, so yeah. So she was like, I'm sorry, I was going to buy it and does not tell you. I'm so, I feel so bad. I'm like, it's a cat feeder. Don't feel bad. Um, <laughs> so then the, they got another one uh, <laughs> and they figured That's it out. Fucking hilarious. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was dying in my office chair when she was like, I wasn't going to tell you, I was going to replace it. And I was like, this isn't a Disney movie, <laughs> it's a cat feeder. Oh no! Yeah. Oh my God! What like? I, at the very least, it it failed quickly, I guess. Because like, yeah, if it had failed slowly, that would be a problem. Yeah, it failed fast enough for for the for her to clearly go. I should unplug this from the wall, and also with enough time for them to get another one and learn how to operate it. Yeah. Well, no, I I was just more like concerned about like the house burning down than anything yeah. else because of like. But I guess I guess as long as it fails within like a few minutes of you fucking up, everything's good. Yeah, that's the real secret. Like that, and I'm also watching <clears throat> my my neighbors going away for a little bit, so I'm watching their cats for a few days. And uh, his daughter said that her friend is gonna come by to play with the cats and make sure they're not lonely i'm i'm just like bringing in the mail feeding them yeah yeah, yeah. Cat later i'll play with them a little bit but i don't really have that, that kind of time so i, mm-hmm. I was like do you does she know that i'm going to be just entering the house <laughs> because especially yeah, that's especially post covid i'm just a big hairy homeless like yeah six foot something tattooed man that's going to be walking into a house with some so, so, I'm just gonna terrify somebody. I'm I'm positive. I mean, you could probably terrify someone on a street. Yeah. 
I mean, you go you go to the right place, you're kind of imposing. There's one at, like, late night times back when I would, would do, go to bars and the such. Like, whenever... I was one of the people, the bartenders would be like, and also, if you're... Don't want if you want someone to walk into your car, he can walk into your car because he's like just a. I'm just like I'm not freakishly tall. I'm I'm regular tall. Uh, you're not freakishly tall, but you're tall. I'm you're t- definitely I'm tall. you're definitely tall. Like if we stand next to each other, you're noticeably taller than me, and I'm five ten. So like, yeah, but like I I was I I just looked, especially now. Holy crap! If I went to a bar now, whole. The, they'd just be like, you, like this person will walk you to the parking lot because it just if you know you know uptown Kingston, like the parking lots are close. That's not a long walk. Yeah. I don't care. I'll leave. The bartenders doesn't care because they know I'll come back and you know I'm not just skipping out on a bill. That's but also, if I'm walking with somebody, they they probably won't get attacked. Oh, they they asked you to walk with people. Yeah, yeah. There, okay, there's a, there's okay, a couple. Okay. There's a handful of people where like. Someone be if someone was uncomfortable because it was late or whatever, they'd be like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." We, we know these are the group, like the three people that we know that are cool, aren't just gonna leave and not pay a bill. And we know like they don't care about you, so they they're won't not wa- gonna do a crime. Yeah, they're we're not, not doing it. They're not, not gonna, gonna do, a do a crime to you. We're not gonna do a. Crime. You're not gonna crime you. I won't crime you. Yeah, there's. I, I'm no, not a people fair. person. I don't like most people. But in the way in which I'm crime avoidant, because if I do a crime, then that's more interaction. <laughs> <laughs> that has got to be the weirdest reason anyone has ever stated for why they are not going to do crime. Um, yeah, yeah, I didn't do a crime. Why didn't you do a crime? I just didn't want to interact with anyone. It's. I mean, it's. I'm what do you call an introvert? I know I go in public, but. That, that's really going to exceed the number of spoons that I have to deal with just bullshit. <laughs> that's fair. Yeah. That is a lot of spoons. Not going to lie. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 the, the, this is a new, like, thing that you've opened up to me. Because, like, I don't go to bars. Yeah. Period. Because, like, I also don't drink for personal reasons. Um, but like, that's such a foreign realm to me. And you've described something that's just kind of hilarious. Yeah. Um, that reminds me though. So, uh, when I go and pick up Christina on the weekends, yeah. um, I usually take the southbound near my house. Okay. Not the throughway, but like the local road. Yeah. I'll take that south down to Newburgh and then move from there. Um, and I pass by a strip club every time, right? Okay. The mansion is what it's called. Yes. Um, which, if I'm giving away the fact that I'm going to Newburgh, it, it's pretty. You can find a strip club named the Mansion in Newburgh. Yeah. It has some of the most. I think we described it on the show. It has some of the most erotic. Uh, advertising I've ever seen, like roadside yeah. advertising, without it being like, without them showing anything. Yeah, it's yeah. like it's like there's a burger that the woman is holding sideways and like licking it in one of the <laughs> things, and yeah. like it clearly looks like the woman is licking a vagina, and it's implying that, but it's not. Yeah, they're going right up to the line and then painting the yeah. line a, a, a lewd color. Yeah, exactly. So, anywho, every time I drive by it now, fucking packed. Like, Why? the the line of cars. So, you know how there's, like, sometimes those, like, those horseshoe-shaped, like, driveways on those types of places? Yeah. Um. So, they have a horseshoe-shaped driveway in, like, a parking lot. Parking lot's always full, first of all. And then the horseshoe shaped driveway has cars almost the entire like span of it. Yeah. And it just is like crawling with people. And I'm just like, what the fuck is going on in there? Because <laughs> it's like a steakhouse too. So, like, is it like yeah. the best goddamn steak that has ever existed? The food might or be is good. It... But, like, even if the food is good, that's still like. 
a lot of people at a strip club. People like steaks and people like butts. I don't know. What, I, I don't know. I have no idea what the inside of that trip club looks like in the first place, but that's a whole nother thing. So, e- Erica's uh, uh, co-worker. So there was a, a text ex- exchange that happened, and this reminded me of it. And this was also very recent. Her, she found out her mm-hmm. son went to a strip club for the first time. And How old is the son? Uh, I don't yeah. know. I don't know. I want to say 17. I think okay. I think her son's 17. Um, he went to a strip club the first time, and his biggest takeaway was that it, it, it was they're so expensive. I, I think he spent like three hundred dollars. Because like yeah, he was. It, it, what it sounded like is that he was clearly in a strip club for the first time. So then they did all of the things you do to somebody. To get the money yeah, out of them when they the go for time. the first time, so he just he just lost three hundred dollars, and it sounds like he intends to go again, but to spend significantly less money because he's like, all right, I know what the traps are now, I know how they get you, now I can actually go. I I think that it might be a more classy one. I think it might be a bikini bar type place, but I could be wrong. Maybe I mean it depends because you can spend three hundred dollars on. I, I, I'm talking about the one I was talking about. Oh, Sorry. gotcha. Okay. Because I was like, you can go to a but, regular restaurant and spend $300. All right. So I opened up I opened up the Mansions uh, Gentleman Club's website because yes. I was curious. Um, perfect for your bachelor party slash bachelorette party. World-class entertainment. <laughs> relaxing comfort. Dine-in elegance. Top shelf liquor. Divorce parties. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. Proper uh, attire required for admittance, dress to impress, no tank tops, hats, athletic apparel, headgear, or baggy pants. Oh, okay. They, they have a, a they no have sweatpants code. code. Which which tells me that it's, it's, at the very least, marginally classier than most places, because, like, Sweatpants are kind of like I feel like a like hallmark of going to something a place like that. The point is you wear the sweatpants because then you can feel things more. Like that's yeah. the creepy guy thing to do. Like that's just Oh, what 100%. You do. It's a creepy 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 guy thing. Yeah, it looks uh it looks pretty clean. I'm actually on their uh their website. website. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a weird thing. I I I mean, I Personally, I'm not a fan of strip clubs, like, for myself. But, like, I respect the women who work there. Yeah. Right? Like, fucking, if you can get money out of a dude for stripping, like, get that money. Yeah. Get paid. Fucking get paid. Get paid. Get paid. Indeed, indeed. Uh, So, talking about strip clubs... Welcome to Cryptopedia, an exploration of the myths and legends that haunt the human mind. Each week, we will take you on a journey exploring the mysteries of the world, tackling the tales of monsters, folklore, the paranormal, and that thing that definitely lives under your bed. I'm Brandon. I'm John. And uh, and I just remembered that there was a strip club that we're near li- where I lived in Rochester called a Classy Cat. Yeah. And it was spelt weird. It had a K for classy and a C for cat. And I don't know why they did that. Uh, maybe th- there might be another classy cat. They might be trying to be legally different enough. They closed down for good too. So, uh, okay. Thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see. So this week's creature is humanoid in appearance. It roams New South Wales, Australia. It was first seen in 1921 and is no longer seen today. Not the. Did we cover the yowie on this yet? Did we cover the Yowie? I don't think we probably mentioned it. I don't think we had like we a Yowie. It. Is it episode. is it a Yowie? Is it a Yowie? It is like, not the Yowie. Today You said you said humanoid? Yes, humanoid. Okay, I'm like half paying attention, so. Okay. <laughs> Fair. Uh today we're talking about the Goria ghost. And uh let's see if I oh, can you, do you the fucking thing with, You fucking You fucking got me. I got, you got me. Good. Because you fucking, you fucking said it was the, uh, you said humanoid, and I, I thought it was a humanoid person. It's a, it's a, a humanoid, humanoid ghost. It's a spooky spooky. Not a ghost. I don't do ghosts a... too frequently. Um, so before no, we that's, start. No, that's my, that's my shit. 
That's your shit. But I know there's a reason I'm really excited about this. So before we start, I w I've been sitting on this one for a while, specifically since March 5th of last year. And uh, what? it's an interesting story that I heard about and I thought I could do a full episode on it, but it was hard mm -hmm. getting any information. I knew it was like a really big thing in Australia, uh, but my searches okay. came up with very limited info and I don't have a VPN. Otherwise, I suspect I, I could have uh, luck searching from like an Australian server somewhere, uh, but I got tired of seeing this in my to-do folder and got mm -hmm. I, I bought a few books. So the primary source will be uh, Mystery, Myth, and Misdirection, Hunting the Gory Ghost by Daniel Best, as well as Gory Ghost, uh, a compilation of original newspaper accounts out of Australia's most prominent poltergeist case. Uh, a book so of you compiled know, articles by Patrick Gallagher. You know you can just go to google.com.au, right? I... Fine. <laughs> like, that's a thing. Like, you can go into, you can go into, like, you can go into, like, fucking... Australian Google? And then go to Australian Google, yeah. That's, like, a thing you can do. Oh. Just, just wanted to let you know that, like... For future future, for future reference, yeah, because like that's a thing yeah. that you can do that might save you some some uh, some heartache, but yeah, yeah. Well, this one was nice because the the uh, the newspaper articles were were actually because those are even books. even with uh, Google would be a little bit harder to track down all of them in the order that they were published. Yeah, I mean the the hard thing with finding newspaper articles is like you need to find someone else has to have already clipped them, like. In terms of like, you know, prep them for yeah. Uh, and the like nice thing about these is they, they were typed up, so it wasn't that thing where it's a scanned newspaper article, mm -hmm. which is something we we get a lot uh, for for our research. Um, so the first article that started everything was from a, a, a place called The Mail on Saturday, April 9th, nineteen twenty one, titled it "Spooks Throw Stones at a Mystery House: Police Baffled." And uh, it says Sydney. Uh, so, like, yeah. like in America, this could be like a super racist. <laughs> oh yeah, in America <laughs> at this the is same very time. Racist. Yeah, like, like, like. Ah, uh, now I feel sad that I've even said that. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, Sydney, today there have been strange happenings at the residence of William Bauer, a ganger in the employ of the Gurria Shire in Glen Innes. His dwelling is a weathered cottage of four rooms situated rather isolated locally, about half a mile from the railway station. And, uh, and the occupants inside, beside the father and mother, three children, and one girl of 12 years of age, uh, the mysterious events began with the girl... Uh, alleging that she was pursued by a man at a distance of a quarter mile from home and who, she further alleged, attacked her with stones while she was running away from him. That's great, awful. Great pastime. My favorite thing to do, just find kids in the woods and throw rocks at them. Uh, he Brandon, didn't yeah. we? We literally had a conversation about doing crimes and, like, being one of the people who doesn't do crimes to people. Yeah. We literally just had that conversation, Brandon. But stone like, literally is a nice socially distanced crime. But, like, <laughs> is it? Because, like, if you throw a stone at someone, like, they might run away, or they might be the type of person who's pissed at you and run at you. Yeah. And then it's the opposite of socially distant. Yeah. Then you have to, like, It's socially close. It's yeah. socially close. True. True, true, true. Uh... He disappeared before she reached home. Uh, at night, the family was much disturbed by stone throwing, the missiles striking the walls. The attack naturally attributed to the individual who molested the girl in the afternoon. In this case, they're using molested not in the sent tense that we would usually use it. Like, I mean, she wasn't li like, like not non-sexual. Uh, at I mean, are we sure about that though? Because like, dudes are terror. Dudes are terrible, but it, it, there's thus far, uh, would, I, there's been they, no sexy stuff. Would they? That's not sexy. Mo molests are not sexy. Well, I mean, like sexy in the in the the touchies. There's been no touchy. Okay. okay. Outside of outside of stones, uh, a right. neighbor was communicated with, and a search made for the offender, but without success. The police were also notified. Um, 
on five successive nights, sometimes with armed neighbors. They watched the house, but the stone throwing continued. All efforts to catch the offender have failed. The police surrounded oh. the house, and the missiles have been thrown. Uh, but when the cordon closes, no one can be found. Uh, it's kind of it's kind of got a similar vibe to the Mad Gasser Mattoon at yeah. this point. Like it's a very similar like somebody says they see something, phantom bullshit happens. You know, police can't find shit, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, and, and at this point, there's nothing stated about a haunting or that it's supernatural. It seems more that the family and their community believes that there's somebody harassing them with stones. And uh, before I continue, I feel it necessary to mention that there is a somewhat extremely un- uh, unique, unique about this case. Uh, many hauntings are speculated to be either real or fake, and the more popular ones have movies made about one. And this case is no different, but here, here's what it is. During the same year that The Haunting happened, in June 1921, a silent movie came out called The Goria Ghost Mystery, directed by John Cosgrove, who made a number of shorts and features between 1911 and 1922. And the movie starred what? the family playing themselves. What? And not only that, it was filmed in their own home during The Haunting. What the fuck? So there was a silent movie made about the haunting with the family in the house that the haunting Wait. was happening during the haunting. Wait, um, what? Is yeah. there, is this, has this been saved or archived at all? Um, um. Th- there, un- unfortunately, there's, there's no copies of this movie that can be found. They, they have, um. It's a lo- it's on the lost media archive. So. Yeah. So they have, at, they know it existed. They know it's real. They know, like, there's flyers for it. They know it was shown in theaters. They just don't currently have... Like, they, it wasn't saved. It, it, it wasn't maintained. Um, this is extremely... Unique- this, I, I have I have the synopsis here. Are you about to read the synopsis? No. Because I want to read the synopsis of this movie. Read the synopsis. Okay. So, The Guria Ghost Mystery is a 1921 Australian movie by John Cosgrove, which is considered to be lost. This is on the Lost Media Wiki. It is based on the real-life accounts of a family living in Guria, South Wales. According to the story, a family is... A family in Guia suffered from... uh, Guia suffered from unexplained attacks on their house. Attacks including loud banging, showers of rocks being thrown at the house, sometimes breaking windows. Police had to surround the house and even keep a close look for the family. To no avail, the attacks continued. One of the children, Minnie, admitted to throwing rocks at the house and making some noise to scare her siblings, but the events proved that she couldn't have been a suspect. Um, when Minnie came back from her visit at Grandma, who stayed at Glen's Inn, the events seemed to cease, and so they they they, they wrote cease instead of cease. Uh so this is this is the problem with wiki <laughs> articles sometimes. <laughs> oh my God, Brandon! Yeah, the director was a part of the cast. <laughs> John Cosgrove as Sherlock Doyle. He named himself Sherlock Doyle, and he's an expert in the fucking thing. That's funny. So Sherlock Doyle, but, in case in case someone listening doesn't know, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle wrote Sherlock Holmes. So by calling himself yeah. Sherlock Doyle, that's a clear Sherlock Holmes, Arthur Conan Doyle uh, reference. Which is fucking hilarious to me yes <laughs> like that is that is like near like that's almost like next level narcissism yeah he thought he was clever as hell for that too you know oh, it 100 percent, 100 percent. that dude was probably like no one's gonna fucking get this i'm no one's gonna get this thing when i'm talking about like the mo- one of the most famous literary characters and one of the most famous authors of this time period. No oh, one's yeah. going to fucking get it. <laughs> uh, the, the last showing of the movie was September of 1921, uh, and it had a decent three-month run. However, the film has been lost to time, and no copies have been found uh, since the director died in 1925. And uh, I have doubt that even a private copy is still around uh, if it hasn't been found already. I think they're just... I think I mean, it's just gone. It's it's so, like ed, like, fringe in terms of, like, what it is, and, like, it's also, like, horror movies weren't a thing, really. Like, that kind of genre film wasn't, like, super popular. 
So, like, there's a pretty, like, good chance that it just disappeared because somebody was just like, fuck this. Yeah. Um, Let me get some of that talkie action. Some of that talkies. Uh, Before diving into the case itself, uh, Aussies have a habit of throwing stones. Sounds about right. Yeah. So, in, in Camp Belltown... In 1901, a James Carroll was uh, haunted by some stone throwing on a nightly basis. Uh, stones in a number of sizes being thrown at random from different directions. One even breaking a cast iron tank that he had. Uh, what? And this continued for a period of three Wait. weeks. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Who the fuck is throwing a stone so hard it's going through cast iron? There's. I think it was like an outdoor tank and may, may have been getting pretty weathered at that point in time anyway it, it must have it must have been rusty like that's the only thing i can think yeah because like the amount of force you need to throw something through cast iron is like we've all Jesus played cup g's they're bulletproof i mean cast iron pans yeah oh yeah uh we'll save your ass so it continued for three weeks and it's not dissimilar from the happenings in goria uh, however, the hauntings would seem to have a more corporeal explanation, as one day a young girl staying with the family was hit in the head, and uh, when she came to, a man with a gun was in the kitchen with her and basically told her to keep it to herself or he would shoot her. <laughs> Wait, what? So the the guy that was throwing just rocks at the house for three weeks Wait. eventually knocked out a girl who was staying with them. And a- a- after it, he felt bad for knocking her out, so he went into the house and he was like, I'm sorry, don't tell anyone or I'm going to shoot you. Oh, my God. Like, don't forget, this is Australia 1921. It's the Wild uh, West, man. Uh, my guess is he felt bad when he knocked out the girl with a stone. He went, he checked on her because he would feel bad for knocking out a child. Well, and this the, is post-World War One. Yeah, in and then he didn't want his cover blown. Uh, the girl screamed. Jesus. And uh, a constable who was stationed near the house gave chase. Uh, the man was not caught, but after uh, a few nights, he was seen sulking in the woods, and the stone throwing had stopped altogether. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Like, what is this? Do- like, did did the owner of that house, like, piss in his Cheerios or some bullshit? Like, what did he do? What happened? So a, a, a theme that will be recurring throughout the story is... Um, Brandon, dis- Brandon. Dis- disgruntled workers. So there are. Did he... Brandon. Yeah. Did the owner of the house take the man's shrimp from the Barbie? <laughs> <laughs> Did he steal his blooming onion? So that itself was not funny, but my <laughs> my imagination went to Aust- our Australian listeners reacting to that, and that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> that was very funny. Oh like it went full circle. I was like, really? And I was like, oh no, that oh uh, Yeah. Did he, he he spilt all the fosters. Did That's he know Australian for beer? That's uh, Australian for beer! Uh, everyone knows Australians speak a language different than English, and also that language has its own word for beer, and that word and is fosters. fosters. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the following year, this time even closer to our location, uh, happened to a group of contractors working on a railroad in Emmaville. The group was chased away from the campsite by stones being hurled at them, and this would happen every night around the same time, which was about 11 p.m. And the stones would get larger and larger. The men could not find any culprits and resorted to just firing their guns into the air. Uh, that sounds about right. This also, was- that, that reminds me of a story. So, yep. like, um, when I was in Boy Scouts, which, uh, Boy Scouts is a horrible ex- experience, by the way. Like, it's just not fun, um, in my opinion. Uh, they had a three-man slingshot. Okay. Some of the older kids. And they just fucking huck rocks into the woods oh. with it. So, I don't know if you know what a three-man slingshot is, Brandon. Is that when, like, one person holds each end of the slingshot and one person pulls on the middle part yeah so you have you have two people and they hold their arm out straight right yeah and they're each holding one side of this like rubber tubing circle like it's a yeah. circle 
there's like two grips for the hands on either side, and then there's a section in the middle which combines the two like halves of the circle into like a single thing. Yeah. And then there's like a little pouch to hold something to launch. So like you pull that fucker back and you can go back like six or seven feet with that shit. And it fucking moves when it shoots. Like when I say it moves, it fucking cooks. Sounds like it rips. Have you guys ever faced each other with water balloons? On a three man slingshot? Yeah. Like, like two groups firing at each other. No, but like, what I was about to say is it's related to this story because they hucked rocks at people, and that's why they were no longer allowed to bring the three-man slingshot. Oh. Because they actually <laughs> hit someone with it. Yeah. Yeah. That's, they had to be so happy about that. I was happy that the slingshot was fucking gone, to be totally honest. <laughs> that fair. thing was a fucking... That was an, ac- that was an accident waiting to happen, and like I was just happy it was gone. I saw a video of a three-man slingshot, but they were using watermelons. Except that... That's cool as shit. It, oh, is that the one where it, it flips around and hits the person in the face? Yeah. 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 It looked very painful. Uh, this would continue. Uh, one of the men even had his covers torn off him in his sleep. And there was never any ex- explanation. However, the locals seemed to think that it was some drunken antics being had. Um, so a, a, that sounds a, about right. There, There's kind of three themes... Of, uh, of uh, around this story and that is um uh workers being mad at the gang boss uh people being drunk and that australians just like to throw rocks and that that that's that that's gonna keep coming uh, up i, I uh, mean that seems fair that seems fair i mean it, it, throwing rocks is kind of just like a human pastime like baseball's just elevated throwing rocks right it's just, it's elevated just rock like throwing it's it's just rock throwing, but like elevated. It's 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 one of those deals. There's nothing like special about it. You're just throwing rocks and hitting the rocks with a stick. Yeah, I, that's it. Curling is an Olympic sport. Like we're just sliding rocks at other rocks. I mean, computers are just rocks that are slamming electrons at each other. Oh, oh, okay, okay. I will believe you because of the people to believe. You are the most qualified. Therefore, that statement must be true. It's because of the silicon in it. So it's like a conductor. Uh, and it, it like provides silica. a means of yeah, like... Yeah, I got gotcha. it, it provides a mean of, means of sending the electrical signals. So it's really just some rocks throwing rocks. It's throwing electricity at each other. I gotcha. It's like next... It's the next level in the game. It's... Yeah, it's like... <laughs> what if like... There's Geodude. And then Geodude uh-huh. evolves into like... Silica Man, and then Silica Man just evolves into a computer chip. I mean, there is an electric type Geodude. Now. Is there an electric type Geodude? Yeah, Alolan. I think Alolan Geodude has electric, or he might oh. be steel. I could be wrong. Okay, there's there's a uh, there new Pokemon game coming out. I'm excited. Mm. It's going to be coming out during the time I have a long time off of work for uh, uh, FMLA bonding stuff. And they also it's it is electricity. Sorry. Oh, nice. Nothing nice. nice, nice. Um, and now we will family get to the Bowen family. Uh, they were potato farmers and they were largely uneducated and were largely an average family of that time. Catherine uh, was described frequently as being clever. William as a ganger. And that's basically a foreman like he's in chart. He's not the business owner, but he's the guy in charge of the people doing he's work. He's a ganger. Is a ganga. That's my bad, that's my bad Australian action. Ganga. Uh, ganga, mate. And he, he was a uh, second generation at the job, and he would keep it for his entire working life. So he's a second generation potato ganger. Hey, uh, listen. Fucking don't disrespect the potato ganger. Don't. Because that's how you get your fucking potatoes, man. <laughs> and potatoes are fucking delicious. Potatoes, like, again, for 1921, potato is probably a very important crop. Incredibly important. It's still pretty important. It's a staple food in some areas. Yeah. Like, I mean, French fries. French fries, yeah. French fries, baked potatoes, th- twice baked potatoes. That's that's some uh, stuff. The mashed potatoes with the garlic in it. The mashed with the garlic is always good. Mm. You can just chop them and boil them. Ugh. Potatoes mm. are good. Or if you're... 
Or if you're like me and a, a bit of a psychopath, you could eat raw potatoes that you can't digest. There's, I've tried raw potato. Uh, I, 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 I'm not a fan. Potato it's salad. It's indigestible. Potato it's salad indigestible. where it's just potatoes and mayonnaise. Potatoes and mayonnaise. That, yeah, that's that's a pretty white, white. Uh, it's plate. pretty white. At this point, I'm just it's trying to make white. Clay angry because mayonnaise, mayonnaise. Um, yeah. Okay. That's damn. That's it. Uh, when they met, Catherine was a widow, 15 years his elder, at 35. Uh, with a few kids. In Jesus, Willi- that's like a that's a pretty large age difference. I gotta say. Yeah. Because he was twenty, and she was thirty five. Right? Yeah. That's that's a little bit much. William my, just a like... few years older than her eldest son Bill, who was fourteen. Uh, and Jesus the, Christ! The, the two promptly married. Um, and if you were wondering why he married so quickly to someone so much his elder, uh, with uh, children barely his junior. Not too long after their marriage, they had their first kid, Minnie. So ah, uh, so he so he likes he likes the milf. It was a shotgun wedding, yeah. He he liked the milf. He liked a milf. What you're telling me? Indeed, uh, they would soon settle a half mile from the rail station where William worked, and uh, have four more children, bringing the total up to seven for those who are count keeping track. What? And the house consisting of only four rooms. Um, have, have they ever heard of, like, a prophylactic in their lives? He just doesn't like to pull. That's all, like... <laughs> but, like, but like, just just get a, like... I feel like there were, like, condom things in that time period. There were condom things. Right? You don't... Like, there were ways. People, people have been, like, avoiding getting pregnant. Like, did they really want that many kids? That just yeah. seems like so many. Yeah, it, it's a lot of kids, and if this was a dollop, like, a third of them would die, but it's not a dollop, yeah. so there's just seven kids. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm looking up whether or not co- when condoms are invented. Some well, are almost the age of their dad. <laughs> That's fucked. <laughs> yeah. The first rubber condom was 1955. 1980, 1895. 1855, sorry. Yeah, 1855 for rubber. They had lambskin before that. Like, there's... But, like, but like, there were rubber condoms. They could have chosen to do this. Yeah. They could have done this. That's not the way of the potato farmer, John. Uh, Minnie, in primary school, uh, consistently did just enough to make it to the this... following year. And it was described this... as a quiet daydreamer. You seem astounded by the history of condoms. What are you looking at? I am. I am. It's just, there's so much. There's, there's so, so much. much. <laughs> there's so fucking much. Like, like, God, I'm just amazed by how much they're, like, I'm not because, like, humans have had, been having sex since humans. Yeah. And, like, not wanting to have kids is a thing since humans. Yeah. But, like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Glands com- condoms were used in Asia prior to the 15th century. In Japan, they were made of a tortoise shell or animal horn? I don't understand that one. What? <laughs> I've never used a horn con. Oh, because horny, I get it. Was it a joke? Was it an elaborate joke by the condom manufacturer? Oh, that makes that makes the incubus in... Uh, in fucking persona take on a different like a different like tone to me cuz it's got that it's got that real long horn come out of it is <laughs> is pp area yeah it's just a huge ass horn it's a horn dog he was just getting ready he was getting ready just getting ready uh during august of 1920 things would finally start to get interesting may hotter his stepdaughter would give birth to a boy she named Clifford. So, again, the house... There's so many people. I just couldn't get over how many people were in such a small house. Um, Ref- <laughs> she was... Uh, I, as soon as I read that, I already knew what the local rumors were going to be. Yeah. She, she was unwed and refused to disclose who the father of the child was. Locals spread rumors that it was William. Uh, the fact that they lived together and were roughly the same age was their evidence. And the fact that yeah. he was closer to her than his wife 
and much closer than a father and daughter should be, according to most accounts. Uh, she I mean, he's f- closer in age to her. Like He's closer in like, age to his daughter than he is to his wife. It's a more appropriate relationship, like, in terms of, like, point of life. Like, where yeah. they are in life, it's a more, like, technically appropriate relationship. It's an inappropriate as fuck relationship from, like, familial dynamics. But that's oh, a yes. whole other fucking thing. Oh, yeah. Um, she died five months later, and Minnie, uh, eight, at age 12, uh, became, like, the acting mother of the house. Uh, oh, what? Uh, of the child, right? Like, yeah, I'm assuming she, the she wife She became didn't... the mother of the child. The... So mom died. Minnie, at age 12, becomes the mother of the baby that was born, that was causing Wait, rumors. but what about the wife? Like, what about his actual wife? There's... I need a fucking flowchart, Brandon. Did you prepare a flowchart for me? Uh... Because this is... This is... I am very familiar with these types of familial relationships because, like... I need a flow chart sometimes yeah. to describe my family so, structure. So his 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 wife has a daughter. He has yes. sex with the daughter, and that daughter has a okay. baby. Okay, the, we're not that. that it's alleged. It's implied. It's that implied. He had sex with her. So his implied. But he probably did. His implied um, baby mama slash daughter dies, and okay. his his real daughter confirmed daughter. His confirmed daughter starts taking care of. The rumor baby. The, the the possible child. Yes. The, and the then, grandchild child. And then the real mom, or the the wife, they don't say what she's is doing. She's still alive. She's still okay. alive. She, okay, okay, it's, okay. She's not really taking care of the child, and they don't go into it, but she might also be suspicious and therefore and she's like, less inclined to care for the child. She's like at least 47 then. I mean, Brandon, it, it's suspicious... You're in a fucking four-bedroom house. Like a four-room house. You f- you know what's going on. Oh, you know what's going There's on. There's no... Like, if, if something's happening, there is a 0% chance that you don't know what's happening. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she knew. Yeah. Is she, what I'm going to say. She, she, well, she, she fucking knew. They kept bumping into her. <laughs> um, for, for Catherine, this was her third was child to die. Um, and for Minnie, it was her first experience of death... And for William, presumably the first death of a romantic partner. Um, oh, God. As to their family uh, life, a schoolmate named Dip Ma Cusack uh, was writing her autobiography in the early 1970s. And in her journal, she had written uh, the following, which is the stark scene of the cocky's uh, of the cocky farmer's hut amongst the timber on the wind bitten ridge. It was there that uh, he had literally thrown his daughter and her love child into the cold, cold snow where they both died. The Wait, go- what? The ghost returned to, uh, to heave rocks on the roof, so terrified the farmer almost into regret, uh, if not repentance. Detectives came from Sydney and uh, clairvoyance around began uh, pontificating by remote control. Uh, throughout it all, the dead girl's brothers, dead girl's brothers remains remained unmoved eventually leading to the widely expressed suspicion that in some way they were responsible for the chain of rocks on the roof wait uh to avenge his sister's death i am so that uh, you're confused and you should be at that point okay is all right so is she implying that the reason the 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 baby mama died is because william kick the baby mama and the child out of the house in the cold? Yeah, so she's directly then, accusing William of throwing baby mama slash stepdaughter and child into the cold to die, okay. and that's what caused the ghost. May. May is the name of the stepdaughter. Okay. okay. Yes. Um, okay. And there there are a few inaccuracies, which I'm inclined to forgive. Uh, it, it being a memory uh, recalled by a child and then regurgitated by the same child in the 70s from like 50 years later um Mm -hmm. william was her stepfather not her father um he was a ganger um not a farmer so he was the foreman not necessarily directly doing the labor however we see them frequently called farmers and i I presume they just grew lots of potatoes also on their property um to feed Mm -hmm. a family that fucking big 
Um, that's that's a fucking huge family. That's a huge family. Um, however, uh, Clifford would be would be shocked to know that he died back then, given that he died in early 1991. <laughs> so that one, that that I will not forgive that inaccuracy. He did not kill the child. The child lived until the year I was born. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, May did, however, uh, die. Geez. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, shortly after, her eldest son, Bill, moved in. He was married and had kids, so William built an adjacent cottage for them. Now, if you're keeping track, we're at four adults and nine kids. Uh, several I left out because that's too many names for me to even try to keep track of. It's already like that's... a fucking flowchart. Um, and I'm many already, continue like... to do domestic stuff, taking care of the other kids. This is some 17 kids and counting bullshit. Yeah. Also, I listened to the someplace underneath about that. Holy fucking shit, that's fucked up. That Wait, whole thing. The the 17 kids and counting story? Oh, I didn't, Real I didn't fucked know that up. One. I'm not going into it on this, but the Duggars yeah. are a fucked up group of people. That's oh. all I'm going to say. Okay. Um... Let's see. I included a photo of Minnie and William taken in 1921, the same year that the haunting started. Uh, Minnie has dark hair, and William is barely taller than she is. William's kind of a short guy. He's very short, or Minnie's tall, or a combination of the two. Um, and now, without further ado, we shall enter the haunting. Um, it was April 1st, 1921, that William Bowen went to the police station and told the sergeant uh, that a railway sleeper, which is... That's the wood parts that go under the track, so the rails are the metal bits and the sleepers are yeah, the yeah, yeah. the wood bits. Um, yeah, had yeah, been yeah. placed against a window, and the putty from the window had been removed. So Const oh. Constable Roy uh, Stennett recalled this in 1971. So presumably someone got mad at him and leaned a heavy piece of wood against the window and removed the putty, which presumably was holding parts of the window in. So I think, think someone well, wanted to damage the window, but make it look like an accident. Yeah, I mean, also removing the putty is like removing the sealant that makes the window like useful. Yeah, so too. like rain, like, moisture would get yeah. in. It would probably yeah. be drafty. So it seems like someone was mad. Someone wanted to fuck his house up. Yeah, someone was pissed at their foreman is what I'm, I'm taking my takeaway from that. Yeah. Um, he and another constable were sent, and he confirmed that William Bowen, what he said was true. And uh, then it was odd since the rail railway was nearly a mile away. So someone was mad enough to carry a big piece of wood for a mile. Listen, I've been that mad, all right? Like, I get that. Like, because I, I like literally, when I went into my PhD program, I was so, the reason I went to get a PhD was because I was so mad about an argument I had with a coworker. That I was like, <laughs> no, fuck this. I'm going to become a professor so I can teach people not to do this. <laughs> that That is literally where I was operating from when yeah. I was super pissed. So, like, just, like, that is, like, everything. So, I get it. I get it. <laughs> Carrying a railway sleeper makes sense. Like, to me, that's just like, oh, no, that's a normal, that's a normal fuck you. That's completely yeah. normal. Um, it, it was during this interaction that police that I just think he would like he'd start off really angry and like by the first quarter mile like start getting tired and like I, I, no, I no, no, no. no 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 when you're that pissed nothing stops you uh, like like that man that man was carried by rage and fury just rage he's like oh I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you I'm gonna uh, fucking <laughs> you motherfucker mother of <laughs> my Barbie my shrimps fosters Stop um, stealing my shrimp and fosters. Stop stealing my shrimp and fosters. Um, it was during this interaction with the police that he um, informed them of what had happened to his daughter, Minnie, the night before. Which I, there's a couple, there's some red flags that come up in the family dynamic and like how like. That, uh, it's, it's kind of fucked that a piece of wood being leaned up against the house is a thing you call the cops for. But and not your daughter being assaulted in the woods. Yeah, that's that's kind of um, that's weird priorities in my opinion. Yeah, 
she was heading home uh, the afternoon of the 31st, and an unknown man came out of the bush and began to speak to her. She ignored him and started walking faster. Oh, which, I just... Right move. It's April... Brandon, it's April 1st. This is just a prank go- gone awry. That's That might potentially be why it's a mm-hmm. slow start. I haven't actually considered that before. When did April it's Fool's a... start? When did oh, April I don't Fool's know. start? That's a good question. That's now on my it. like list. When did April Fool's start? All right, Google, don't fail me, Neil. I know it's going to be April 1st, 2022, 1582. Oh, 1582. 1582. Okay, so it's like a thing the, at this point in like time. Origins. I mean, it might be April Fool's. This yeah. might be a fucking April Fool's joke. Uh, she was uh, heading home. There's well, a festival called Hilaria, which was celebrated in a- ancient Rome. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. The more you know. Um, she ignored him, started to walk faster, which had apparently angered the man who started yelling at her. She began to run, and he began to throw Sounds stones at her. Um, she broke out into a sprint, and when she was close to the house and started screaming, her father and brother, who uh, both left the house with shotguns and hand fired into the air uh, during a search. No trace of the man could be found. So, I, I, I guess, yeah, so they ran out, and they looked for him. Um, no tra- so, so, but, like, but, like... But like, this is kind, it's kind of wild westy out at this time. But 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 like, this is a bigger deal than someone scraping some putty and putting a, a like a wooden tie against your like a, a sleeper against your window. In my opinion, yeah. Well, this might like, have been um, an, an like, instance of like I don't want the cops around in case I do catch the guy, kind of thing potentially. Maybe, but like, but like. He's white, so like he's fine. <laughs> That's that is uh, also very true in Australia. Like, there's, there's like a lot of horrors like, happening to Aboriginal people. Yeah, like, but that's that's point my point. Like, he's he's got nothing to fucking worry about. He's yeah. he's got nothing to worry about. Not only that, he's a person in a position of like power. He's like a manager, so like he's doubly fine. Yeah. Uh, no tracks or evidence. Of anyone giving chase or throwing rocks who could be found. When he gave a description to wait, the police... Wait, 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 What does evidence of throwing rocks look like outside? Because cause here's, here's what I'm saying, what I'm going to say. If there's just, like, a pile of rocks, do I say, someone threw that? Like, 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 a pile of yeah. ro- rocks, it's like, do, do you say... Yep. Someone took that and they fucking threw it. I know it. Well, for, for but like police, I, I can't see that being possible. But for example, at my parents' house, the border, the property borders are are literally piles of rocks in the woods. And yeah. So I, as if as a family member saw a not like a throwable rock, but a big enough to carry rock out of place, then potentially a family member could say that rock's misplaced. But like. But again, I, I'm you gonna throw assume that. you couldn't throw a rock I'm gonna, that size. I'm gonna assume it's no bigger than a fucking baseball in yeah. size, right? Like presumably smaller in my like because like it's definitely smaller. I don't know. It's definitely smaller. I don't have a rock next to me, but I imagine a rock the size of a baseball would be incredibly hard to throw. No, no, you can throw that, but like, like a baseball is not as big as you think. Yeah. Uh. So it being a very small town at the time. No one matching the uh, description was in town, so they assumed it must be an outsider. Of course. Um, what came out later that Bowen hadn't told the police uh, was that he and his son hadn't just uh, stayed up the night to keep an eye out, but the stones were being thrown at the house all night keeping them up. Uh, however, every time they went outside to investigate, they found no source of the stone thrower. Uh, William claimed that some stones were the size... Uh, were of a size that even he had a hard time throwing. Um, but also, he's a tiny man. Um, he is tiny. Like, like I'm not going to lie, he's a little bit short. He's short. But he uh, apparently was like, I'm a well-built man of the land. I, I couldn't even throw it. But He's got like, a Pee Wee Gaskins vibe to him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> uh, based on the photo taken of him the same year this happened, he was hardly built different than a almost teenage girl. Um, yeah. <laughs> and from reading, I decided too boring to include. Uh, may have had a drinking problem and a Napoleon oh, complex. Absolutely. Which makes sense for a tiny foreman to have. 
<laughs> he's kind of checking off all the like bingo card he, like things yeah. for this. Yeah, he he's oh yes, most definitely. He's he's basically just like all right, um, short. Okay, drinking problem. Mm-hmm. Uh, instantly threatens people with a shotgun. Okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> foreman. Okay, yep, yep. We've got a um. We got that. Yeah. Like like the the stereotypical short guy who's running a business or something, and he gets yeah. all angry. Uh, the two cost constables then went out for a night of drinking, and the next morning, William had returned to the station, uh, exasperated and claiming that a sleeper had been taken and put in back against his window, and the putty removed again. So th- there was a repeat. Um, but, but like. This time it's like less impressive because it's just in a pile of wood on the side. Now it's just like this it's is much closer be, gonna, this time. Yeah, I'm gonna fucking get you. The- now, like they've already done the hard work, like the person. Yeah. Now it's just maintenance. Like it's maintenance. Yeah. At that point in time, Breaks. just burn its wood, burn it, and then they can't put it back. Yeah. Well, but then again, you might not want to waste that because it might be good wood. Yeah. Well, you could use it for a fire for cooking or whatever. Uh, the same constables, uh, Stennett and Taylor, and another named Ridge, went back to the house with him the same night. Uh, it was what, this is in quotes, what we used to call Guy Fox weather, Stennett recalled 50 years later. There was no moon and fog and mist swirled around the paddocks. A man could stand next to you and you could not see him. We had been there for less than an hour when we heard a twenty two rifle discharge and a bullet hit the house and whine off into the darkness. So, so like... Here's the thing. Here's the thing. If a 22 rifle shot and a bullet hit the house, it's definitely a fucking person. It's like it's 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 an American like, ghost. Like yeah, it's, it's such Elmer a person. Yeah. <laughs> like like uh, it, there's no way that it's not a person cuz like these are the types of people who know what a fucking 22 sounds like. There's a God ghost. Damn, I probably and know what it's so- <laughs> I I I never sh- have shot a gun, and I know what a twenty two sounds like. Yeah, I fired twenty like, twos. Like, okay, fine. So, uh, the constables went out to find whoever the shooter was. The Bowen family took cover in the kitchen, and the bullet hit the windowsill and broke the op the opposing window. Uh, after that, a stone stones began to be thrown against the house. However, nobody could see where the stones were being thrown from. Uh, Nobody was found that night. However, it seemed that they all agreed that the culprit was the mysterious stranger that many had claimed chased her through the woods. Drunken stone throwing was common in the town, uh, but shooting at the police was not. I... (laughs) (laughs) There's so many things that are being said right now that are just like... Being said as, like, as though they're the normalest fucking shit in the world. And, like, I don't even know where to begin with this. <laughs> it's, it's... Because, like... Like... Th- there's a reason why, like, I I opened with trying to go into, like, a brief history of drunken stone throwing. <laughs> it, it's just... It's just... <laughs> it's just tops. Like, how much people are fucking... Like... <laughs> What the fuck? What the fuck? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> assaulting a child with stones is one thing, but scaring the police is a line crossed t- too far. So the following day, three constables, William Bowen, his son, and a neighbor sent out for, to search for the dark man. So, like, mm. they're, they're finally, like, expanding the search. Um, oh, I'm a little worried about who they're gonna find now, based on the language that they're using. The, the six men, uh, the six armed men on horseback, then set out to kill this stranger. However, they were unsuccessful. Uh, word spread quickly that the Bowen home was under attack by a stranger throwing s- stones and shooting at police. Uh, again, that never happened. They fired at the house, not the police. Um, he shot a he shot at a building filled with children. I mean, <laughs> which I consider worse than shooting at the police. Uh, the, the, I guess. I mean, I mean, I definitely consider it worse because, like, you know, it's a house are really full just, of children. 
<laughs> Police are really just there to protect the, the interests of the corporate elite, but, you know, whatever. Yeah. The, the town was then on high alert looking for any strangers. That's usually when bad stuff happens to people who are not, like, who don't deserve it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like, just, just saying. Yeah, uh, and uh, <laughs> uh, the following light... Uh, the, the following night, they were led by the sergeant, um, and at this time, they were now looking for uh, a man charged with attempted kidnapping, molestation, property damage, and attempted murder. Armed men would just start showing up the house and were, end in quotes, always eager to shoot something bigger than a kangaroo or a rabbit, end quote. Wait a fucking second. Wait a fucking second. Kangaroos are not small. They're not small. Like... What? Like, 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 isn't a kangaroo, like, I might be misremembering this, but isn't a kangaroo, like, a human so- in size? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, the, 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 the point is that, um, this it become, like, I, I think it became just a thing to do because it's a small, boring town and drunken stone throwing the shine's taken off of it. So Brandon. now people just drink and show up to the bone house who, according to that quote, the the unsaid uh, words is I want to kill a human. <laughs> Their people are just showing up to hunt humans. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, so I just looked this up, Brandon. Yeah, kangaroo tail is uh, about two feet long, right? Okay. They're wait, 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 wait. Okay, they're they're nine feet tall, like nine point two feet long. Right, Brandon. That means it's a seven foot tall nightmare creature. It's yeah, people. <laughs> it's a nightmare. I like where this is going now. <laughs> the nightmare creature. Like it's better like, than people turning up because they want to do a murder. <laughs> like, holy shit! Look at this. Look at this fucking image of this kangaroo. Look at. Uh, I don't know if this is real or not. It might be, but, like, look at this fucking kangaroo, and look at the mu- Like, this thing is fucking ripped. I wouldn't want to fight a kangaroo. It's Australia. It's gotta be real. Like, look at this. Look at this. I don't know if that's a real picture. I- actually, it might be a real picture. I th- I'm oh, pretty God, sure it is. Oh, God, I think that's a real picture. Yeah. Jesus Christ, that's a nightmare. Yeah, because I saw a video once of a guy punch a kangaroo because it was fucking with his dog. And it it looked like it was about that size. They yeah. are they are like <laughs> scary. Oh yeah, like it's got it's ripped. That thing's got biceps. Yeah, whenever there's a, a a animal that has biceps, I get like I get anxious. Yeah, because that means that they have like they're they're more like ripped than I am, and that's scary. Yeah, no, the kangaroo's like, jacked. I'd never fuck with a kangaroo, let me just say. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Um, and, and this is where I shall leave us until the next part. A mysterious man, an armed mob. Uh, is this the Wait. work of some pissed off, uh, someone mad at his tiny Wait. foreman? Or is Wait. it the, a prank played by an emotionally distraught teenager? Or is it a tiny, shooty, molesty ghost? Are you telling me that this is a multi-part fucking episode about a man throwing rocks? It is a multi-part episode about a man throwing rocks. (laughs) What? (laughs) How is there two episodes worth of content about a man throwing rocks, I don't know how many episodes. I didn't finish the book yet. (laughs) But, like, Brandon... (laughs) What the fuck? <laughs> yeah. How far into the book are you? Um, I don't know. It's 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 on. I have it on Kindle. I can't see it, tell how thick it but, is. But like, you can see, you can see percentages on Kindle. Uh, I'll have to check. I don't know. I imagine I'm 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 about halfway through uh, the back end of the book. I imagine is has nothing to do with the haunting itself and is just fluff. Um. Oh my god. I'm gutting the fluff. I put the Kindle location in there if anybody wants to what? buy the book and keep track. What What the fuck? What is this story, Brandon? It's 
it's it's why I love doing this podcast because I thought it was going to be a ghost story and it turned into like a very short potato farmer and a drunken mob. But like what? <laughs> like how? <laughs> Statue commemorating the lamb and potato industries, Curia, New South Wales. Guria has a statue celebrating potatoes. Yeah, it's it's a picture of a sheep um standing over top of a potato. Oh good. Like, that's that's liter like like this is the statue. It is a sheep and there's a potato plant underneath the sheep. That is the entirety of the statue. Oh like, look at this. Great. It is statue, literally bro. it is literally a sheep. Standing over a potato plant. Oh, talking about statues. So the 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 hospital where we're gonna be giving birth. I just noticed we had to go there the other day. Has a statue of a dragon. Which Northern Duchess has a statue what? of a dragon. What? Northern Duchess has a statue of a dragon. Also, even better is that it. Not to bash the artist. It looks like I could have made the statue of the dragon when I was in middle school. It's a very poorly done statue of a dragon. I, I've been there, and I've never seen the statue. It's it's not big like that one. It's uh, It was big enough where I saw two middle-aged white ladies climb it and take pictures for a presumably Instagram. Um, <laughs> I don't know if it'll... I tried to Google it. I'll take a picture next time I'm there. Oh, my God. It's I need like to see when this. When you go in the, the main entrance... Um, How there's like that one it? building that's separate from the, from the, the, the main part. And there's a parking lot that has, um, like cobblestones. If you park on the cobblestone parking lot, the statue of the dragon's like right there. What? I've never seen that. Oh God. This is, this is okay. You need to send me a picture of this. Yeah, next time I'm there, I'll, I'll, I'll snap a picture <laughs> for you sure. You send me a picture of this, and I'm going to upload it to the fucking... It looks like, Instagram. um, if you've ever seen, you know, like, the old-timey drawings of dragons done by Englishmen? It looks like someone made a statue of what an English old Englishman thought dragons looked like. So it's kind of goofy. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. All right, <laughs> um, that's the episode, by the way. Uh, so I'm going to just do our plugs. So as always, our website is cryptopediacast.com. Instagram is cryptopediacast. And whenever Brandon takes a picture of it, I'm going to put that picture of that statue up on that Instagram. <laughs> our Twitter yep. is at cryptopediacast as well. Um, our email is cryptopediacast at gmail.com or us at cryptopediacast.com. Um, we have a Patreon and I just want to thank our Jackalope level sponsors. Uh, Clay Sinclair, Marty Von Party, Bird Schneider, Jonathan Shepard, and fuck Andrew Jackson. We have a Facebook group that I don't post anything in anymore, um, but there's people there. Uh, <laughs> there's people there. Um, uh, yeah. If you there, there's po if, people posting to it. Yeah. If you yeah. enjoy the the podcast, be sure to rate, review, subscribe, share it with a friend, all that fun stuff. Um, if you have monster requests and stories, you can send them in. Maybe we'll get to them. We have a pretty good track record. <laughs> we have a phenomenal track record. Um, and uh, also, uh, there's a Discord, which will be linked in the show notes, where we had someone literally join the Discord and then leave it. Like, like right away. Before anyone noticed them, which was really funny. And I have the feeling it's because they read the general chat that's on this, this the general Discord. Chat, and I like don't know what happened. Uh, one night, like... Clay was in there talking about mayonnaise, and then I went to bed, and I woke up, and Le and Lenwood had a lot. There was a lot. There was there were some theories or something. <laughs> yeah, the, it 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 happened. It was a thing, and like, yeah, it it happened. It really there happened. Is, it go, there's a, there, the the general chat goes in some interesting directions. Yeah. Um. If you're if you're new to it though, just just. Just stay out of uh, stay out of cursed images for your own, you know. Oh, what's in cursed images? For your own sake, it's just a lot of like. Is there new stuff things. in there? No, it's just constant. It's consistently awful. That's all. 
True. Oh, oh there's nothing too crazy in there. Off. It's I'm just consistently through. Oh, I did awful. not see that Squidward Brock Johnson. Yeah, it's just it's just it's just consistently awful. That's all. Um <laughs> Yeah, so check out our Discord. Uh, you can find yeah. me on Instagram at donkey underscore hands. My website is boyerb.com. My email is brandon at cryptopediacast.com. And my Twitter is at cryptobrandon. On Instagram, I'm at mu2057. Twitter is JF Dunham. My website is johndunhamgames.com. And my email is john at cryptopediacast.com. Our art was done by Tom Hill. You could find him at Thomas Michael Hill. His website is greatergloryco.com, and his email is tommikehill at gmail.com. As always, I'm John. I'm Brandon. And things are going to get weird. <laughs>